<clears throat> What's up, everybody? Old side by clicking the mandatory scene and removing the beta site mark. Alright. Well, I don't have that checked. It says I got the, like, the beta tab is out, but I don't have beta checked. Let's try that. Yeah, now we're good. We're talking. Thanks, Mord. That did it. Yeah, I didn't have beta checked, but it had me on the beta site for some reason. Oddly enough. Well, it's on my it's on my Disc Jam game account, so it's not even on the Pixel Logic thing. So it's still on my end. I just I don't know. But checking and unchecking it seemed to clear it, and then took me back to the regular site. So that's good. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm gonna try and do some more environment stuff today. I'm just gonna try and hammer out as much of this as I can. Um, been blocking out for. I keep putting this off and coming back to it. Putting it off, and coming back to it. Um, Starting to bother me, so um, so yeah, I'm just gonna try and get more detail done and start fleshing out more what this architecture is gonna look like. Um, you know, might even throw it in the engine and go back and forth between Maya engine and everything. What's up, Luden? Is welcome back. Good to see you again. Um, I guess we'll start. I was actually uh, I wanted to talk about. My experience at the um, ZBrush Summit, which was a lot of fun, really uh, a real pleasure and an honor to participate in this. Um, a lot of really, really talented artists. Uh, this guy Furio apparently won it for the third year in a row. Um, so yeah, I mean, like the amount of, we only had three hours to complete this. Uh, well, I didn't have a stream during the summit. I was. Uh, I was participating in this, and this was that was on a Thursday, which is what I'm usually scheduled for. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like a lot of really, really good artists here. Um, the amount of detail these guys were able to get done and rendered in three hours is really impressive. I didn't have enough time to get my render where I wanted it to, but um, I was really quite happy with what I got to in the time. I did this one here. Um, didn't get enough time to work on the materials didn't get enough time to put more detail in it. You'll notice like I realized after the fact but um, I was the only person who actually posed my model and um, I think it might have cost me more time than it was really worth. I think, I think that time would have been um, spent on, better spent on detailing and just getting more, um, you know, which is more detailed dug into the thing. But um, yeah, I mean, like for my first competition, first time thing, I was I was pretty happy with it. Um, really stressful, and and you know, like my whole my whole plan of attack was basically to get um, like get where I could go to where I could start rendering, and then like come back and detail as time allowed. And you know, it didn't leave a ton of time for detailing. I ended up getting like right to the render, and having that be you know the final like five minutes was just like getting the render things in place and uh, you, know, you see detail like this and it's just like oh my god how did you get so much um, detail done but yeah really really cool really fun you know looking forward to maybe trying something like that again in the future um, Marlin is actually we sat next to each other so the winner of the organic sat right next to me and um, I was talking to him about it before we started and he said he'd practiced this exact sculpt a few times and, and basically got it down to where he could complete it in two hours. And then, so he came in totally prepped and it really shows like his work. Um, 
came out really, really nice. I remember working on my final render, and then I hadn't hadn't really picked my head up the entire time I was during the competition. And then after uh, we finally said, okay, pencils down, I looked up, looked over my shoulder, saw his render, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it was such a crest ball, it was such a uh, low moment. Um, this is a really good one too. Um, this guy was right behind me. So the organic guy is really. Um, this one, I got a lot of a lot of people who were watching and letting me know. They said that this is one of their favorites. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, a lot of really good artists in there. And uh, for my first competition, first time doing a uh, first time doing anything like that, I was actually pretty proud of my my result. Um, but yeah, congrats to the guys who won. That was that was a lot of fun. Summit was really good. If anybody hasn't watched the Summit tapes, I. Uh, yeah, Mord, I honestly, uh, I, my sketch didn't have the hat on there. I had, like, the hat was going to be, like, in his hand, or, like, there was going to be a spring holding the hat, and then another clamp holding the head. So, like, I was going to do the antenna stuff because I think it's just, like, better detail. It was just something that I had in my concept, um, you know, and then, but then I decided, like, I, there was a lot of things I ended up changing. Um, the, the, like, I wasn't planning on doing, um, the, the coat I was gonna do like more less cloth more mechanical stuff but then I was just like well the coat and the cravat and the, the bow tie all kind of worked and I didn't obviously get enough time to sculpt the bow tie how much I would have liked to so I was like well let me let me I decided like on the fly to do the cloth stuff um, and so there was a lot of things I, I diverged because I was like oh well this might work and I'm getting short on time so let me just dress this like, it was like basically like a bang for your buck time investment so that's kind of how I got the hat and the and the decided to do the clothing and everything like that. But yeah, I ended up doing the, the antenna first, and I was like, oh, let's just throw the hat on here. Like I, I ended up like doing a few little hot routes on there as I did it. Um, and I actually had a crash in the last like final three minutes, and I was, I was like, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> but luckily, uh, the crash had saved my ZBrush project, so like I got everything back. I was like this close to just like not even having an entry, which was scary. Oh, well, please, I mean, Vit, Vit Jaren, like, don't feel that way because I was very intimidated and stressed and felt awful, and, like, you know, you see somebody put something like this together in the same amount of time that you put your thing together, and it's very discouraging, but, you know, it, it's one of those things where you kind of, everybody's at different levels, and I think it's just, a lot of it comes down to mileage and how much time you, like, you know, I... I I hope that you know with some more years under my belt I, I'll be that much faster, that much better, and uh, you know we'll see. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a super fun. Um, yeah, it's a good challenge. It's a good way to kind of push what you're doing. You know, most of what I do, anyone who's been on you know follows it. Yeah, actually, the chin, the the prize was not only did they get that awesome belt, which is really cool right there, that ZBrush, the Pixelogic belt, but there's also uh, I believe you get. Um, I think there was like 3D printers and stuff on the line. I don't know who got what, but like um, there was like 3D printers, and I think there was like I think the second and third place got something too. Maybe it was like tablets or something like that. I know Wacom was a sponsor, so there were prizes. I'm not not sure where exactly where they were. Um, yeah, but honestly, like it, it was it was something that I wish I would have had the time to prep I, I always kind of like the week before I was gonna prep and the week before that I was gonna prep and I always kind of planned on like okay like let's get a really really solid concept like paint the exact render you want to do sketch it out and get it on paper like there's a lot of things I like was like planning on getting done before I went in there and just with work being as busy as it was I uh, didn't get to do um, I didn't get to do as much of that as I wanted and as a result, I you know I came in there a little underprepared, unfortunately, and I, I, I was mad at myself for that. But given that lack of preparedness, I was pretty happy with where I got. I feel, I feel like I could have. I want to do it again, to be honest. I want to like see where I can get to with with you know having that experience behind me and, and, and trying to get. Then also, if anybody's like been on this channel for a while, um, anyone who's seen my stream knows I, I do mostly game resolution stuff. So very very rarely in my finishing renders. And, and compositing, you know, you know, high detail sculpts. Usually, I do my high detail and the textures, and I'm basically my whole objective is getting everything ready for the game engine, um, which is a different workflow, and that's one I'm far more practiced in. So, um, you know, like that's 
it's it's something that um, I'd like to get better at because I love you know you see like these big beautiful renders that people come up with. I think it's just something that's really really cool eye candy to look at. So I'm, I'm kind of um, I'd like to develop that that layer of what I do um, more. But anyway, what is this? Okay, um, let's get going here. Oops. Got my uh, monitors all out of whack here. This will be a lot of back and forth here because basically, um, I kind of just, I know I've got a lot of detailing to do, I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with it, but I know that I can just dig in and start placing a bunch of stuff and just kind of getting ready for more labor intensive stuff. What I'm going to do is back this off a little bit, I felt a little tight. guys
Alright, sorry about that. So yeah, basically like I kind of want to take some of the lessons from that, because what I did do during the sculpt off that I found was rare for me is I uh, I spent a lot of time or sorry, I spent a lot less time you know, considering things and a lot just more time just ripping. Like you don't really have time to you know dally you're really kind of up against it the entire time so I just was working a lot faster than I usually do and um, yeah, I remember like I kind of pride myself on getting things done in, in a timely manner um, but man it doesn't take long to realize that you're not actually that fast <laughs> so just trying to find the things I know I need to do on this model and just get going on them. And yeah, just get through as much as possible. So this is obviously going to be a little bit of a railing here. Sure thing. Vidjaron? Vidjaron? Yeah, sure. I'd throw the link on there. I'll take a look. here some of your work yeah, that's cool and nice and low poly too so this will work for a game there's the high poly I'm guessing I don't have flash and I'm not going to install it for the purposes of looking at this, so. I don't, I don't, usually I don't mess with flash, it's not my thing. Why do you guys, why do you have flash for these? Yeah, I mean, I think you're definitely on the right track. I mean, you got some solid detail there. I mean, two years in, I think you're progressing nicely. You know, you can't pick this up overnight. I think you got, um, you know, you got a good sculpt there. Proportions look, all look sound. It feels a little rigid, 
and the expression seems kind of neutral, but maybe that's intended because if you're going to animate the face, you want to animate it from a neutral expression. Um, yeah, and maybe you want to put a little bit more detail in there in, in the anatomy. Because um, I think what like this happens a lot to me. Um, you kind of have enough detail in things like the belt and the armor pieces that you're suggesting a level of detail that's higher than that is present in the sculpt itself, right? So like, you know, obviously it's a work in progress, but like you have, um, you know, like you have high frequency detail suggesting that this is a very detailed model, but then like you have these really soft rounded forms and not a lot of detail in the body. So it kind of, you know, if, you, if you're gonna go simplistic, you can get away a lot, you can get a lot away with that. Um, well, you can get turntables with. You don't need flash or turntables. There's Sketchfab. There's Marmoset Viewer. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I don't know um, what you're using for your turntable, but flash isn't necessary. And flash is a dead technology anyway. And I would recommend everybody uninstall it because it's, it's bad for your machine. Um, it's also Adobe, so they're not doing support for it anymore. But yeah, definitely coming a long way though. I mean, like, looks like. Um, you know, you're doing a good job with it, so I would just say stick with it, man. Yeah, yeah, nice low poly base mesh, and I think you could turn this into a game resolution character just by projecting your high resolution details. I think the bake would come out nicely because it's a nice watertight mesh there. Um, so yeah, man, I'd say keep it up, you're doing a good job. What's up, Kyle? Yeah. Yeah, Flash is dead. I would uninstall it, and that's that. Um, Adobe's admitted they're not supporting it anymore with, for good reason. Garbage. What I'm supposed to do, what I'd prefer to have done, but it's too late now, was when I split these ovals out, um, I would have, if you hold alt, you can do a new poly group. I wish I would have done that, because then I wouldn't have to come back and mark all these. I could just Q-mesh by poly group, and then it would be done. But unfortunately, I left them the same poly group as that sort of lime green section. Now i got to manually come in and hit them off, but it's just a few seconds, a few dozen seconds. Okay, now I can Q-mesh by single poly, and it didn't work anyway, lovely. Yeah, the normals on those faces aren't going to allow me to do that correctly. Oh well, it's a good experiment. Step back, quite a ways, do do do. I kind of want to put like an eatery back there, just so it'll be like a patio for people to sort of sit about. So I think where I'll start on that is I'll grab myself a cylinder. Solid looking. I like that. A lot of detail in that. Um, one thing you may want to do is uh, if you put this in a black and white, like the textures could probably pop more. Um, and a good trick to test your values is to take your render and then put it in a black and white, and you can kind of see. Because what I'm what I'm finding happening is a naked with just the naked eye is that all the detail in the face is, is lost on me because um, I can't it's just getting muddied 
So a good thing to do is to just do an adjustment layer, use saturation, take the saturation all the way down. And you see that like all these value ranges are pretty close to each other. You know, they occupy the same like 15% of the value spectrum. And that's not good because, you know, like you want to draw attention to the parts that are interesting. The part with the most detail is obviously the face. Um, so like I would probably brighten up this skull piece to my right, or to the right and the left eye there. Because if that's bright, it'll draw a nice contrast with the, the kind of grayish on the left. And places of value contrast and hue contrast are how you can kind of guide the eyeball. Like see how these fucking there, excuse my language. See how these um, pop out? Um, that's because they're against that black background and that's like gonna be true. Like when you do value contrast and hue contrast, shape contrast, it's like it, the, the eye is drawn to it naturally. And I find that like with the adjustment layer off, it just it's all kind of muddied because it's just all so narrowly in the value spectrum. So something to think about. Maybe like a brighter blue for the skirt maybe or I don't know Yeah, and Art Station is is I find I I still have my De DeviantArt account and I follow a lot of artists on DeviantArt, but I uh, I have a um, I much prefer much 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 prefer. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you don't gotta be, I mean, like, DeviantArt and ArtStation are the same thing. I mean, there's not one more professional than the other. I mean, like, if you're gonna be post, if you're sharing your stuff, share your stuff. I mean, that's just, you know, there's no, um, gotta start somewhere, right? No one starts off, no one's amazing on their first day. <laughs> And Demon Art and Art Station are essentially the same site. Art Station is just far better engineered, and the website itself is better built and more robust. And so people have migrated to it because, like other people in technology, Demon Art found out the hard way that if you don't do a good job with your technology, someone else will and make you obsolete almost overnight. And Art Station, I mean, Art Station is not that old. It's only been around for a couple, few years. And DeviantArt's been around for over a decade or more. And DeviantArt is hemorrhaging users, I'm sure. And, you know, it's just something to think about. Like, ArtStation is definitely superior in my mind. Alright, so let's get going here. Let's take my vertical divide. Yeah, values that con I mean value I think is more important than hue, but I think you kinda you can't get away with one or the other, I don't think. I mean like personally like I don't do very well with hues. I've not been a painter and I've not, you know, spent time painting and and and, and you know, understanding hues and color mixing and stuff. So I, I tend to um, 
what's the word, I tend to uh, work in values first and then try to color from there. So hard. Feature request, Kyle. If you're still here, you got to be able to slow this down. Like, if I'm trying to hit a certain number, I want eight spans. It's like incredibly hard just to land on eight. Like, if you hold control, it should automatically start like going super slow. That's my that's my suggestion. Feature request. Anyway. Yeah, so I mean, what do you think about my stuff? I, you know, like I said, I think you know, I gave you the feed, the feedback I gave you is is uh, you know, what I think of it. I think you're doing well. I think you got a lot of, you know, I think you got a lot of really good stuff happening there. I think, um, you know, like I said about you know, I you know the things I said about the hue and the value contrast and then um, you know things you gotta do there. I think uh, otherwise though, like sculpt looks good, detail looks good. I think, um, yeah, I think you're coming along really well. Um, I think, uh, this looks like a baked model, right? So is this, uh, looks like that detail's baked down. Um, I don't know what the normal maps look like, but I, I don't think this reads very well. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure where you got this render either. Like, the hair, the hair seems flat, so it seems very last generation. It seems like, like a mobile asset. Um. Yeah, I probably could use more on the bracers. Just detail that is. Um, depends on what generation. If you're going for like current gen, this, like this is this wouldn't this wouldn't fly for like uh, Xbox or PlayStation 4 because um, these days you you know you're gonna want materials that that um, have more high, high frequency detail. Um, but yeah, I think you know you definitely. I mean, two years in, you know, it definitely takes a long time. So I'd stick with it. And make sure you're coming along just fine. Still on the oops. doing a quick array mesh here.
come around here. Yeah, and I think I think the one thing to keep in mind is yeah, you don't want to be. It can be really discouraging to get too bogged down and in, in, in seeing other artists. You don't know how long they've been practicing. You don't know how long they've been, you know, trying to get where they're going. It's it's you know it's a very very long road. Um, one, I mean, like shoot, I was just talking about the the sculpt off a moment ago, and like talk about a humbling experience and the sort of driving home the notion that I've really got a lot more to do um, before I'm happy with where I'm where I'm at so um, keep that in mind I mean it's just one thing that like you know doesn't happen overnight and comparing yourself against other artists is often you know not the right way to measure your own progress the thing I would I would say though is just you want to just do a great deal of just mileage, mileage, mileage. Keep working, keep working, keep working. Um, you know, just like finish a project, move on to the next one. Finish a project, move on to the next one. Um, table things.
What's up, Ashley? Gary, what's going on, guys? How y'all doing? So, yeah, I think it's time to start like breaking this down into the different parts of this building I'd like to see. Um, this is going to be like a deck as well as up here. So add some chairs, maybe be a little less so. A good time to grab a um, reference person, throw them up there. Make sure these chairs are the right size or the tables the right size. for casual barbarian. This isn't super important right now, it's really just a matter of, um, I know that I want to, uh, like, there's going to be deck chairs and tables out there, I don't, the placement will all be done in the game engine, so I don't really need to worry about anything other than just like, okay, how does that look up there, is that about the right amount, and then like, I'll start cutting windows and stuff into this building, and start making the building itself, um, you know, breaking breaking down the building itself into pillars and walls and and modular pieces that I can then build in the game engine like when I'm putting the map together.
shortcut for Z intensity and focal shift. Um, yeesh. I don't know. Not that I know of. Um, one of these other guys might uh, have a better, better idea. Um, but not that I know. Other than like the S one for size. I don't know about the intensity. The space bar is like the quickest one I think for like just getting all the like space bar little hot window there. It's probably the best one. Did you ever try to redraw historic old drawings from demons or angels? I mean not demons or angels but one of the best ways to you know practice sculpting or painting is to study the old masters. Um, I never specifically studied that, but... specific idea for the fencing I want.
Hot key for focal shift is the O key. Boom, there it is. Nice. Good. Heads up there, Wyatt Fox. Um, and then you. I don't have you doing anything. Say so you something? For Z intensity is you? It's awesome focal shifts that one. I didn't know that. Uh, where am I located? Skullman84. I'm in Los Angeles, California. Hover over jaw size S, focal shift O, Z intensity U. Yeah, there it is. Z intensity U. Good looking out, guys. One sec. Stubbs, you want to go outside? Sorry, my dog was fussing. I wanted to go out to the patio. The bracket key set the draw size? I mean, I know they do that in Photoshop, but I don't. I, is there, there's a increased brush size and decreased brush size. I'm not aware of it, sorry. Yeah, Wyatt Fox, I actually went into that a little bit in the beginning of the stream. Um, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, repeat myself too much. Um, I, uh, I talked about it in the beginning, and if you want to watch the tape at the end of this, um, uh, you can kind of see. I, I talked a little bit about, you know, what I went through and, and, and working with these guys and what a pleasure it was. Um, that was my entry right there. Um, and, you know, the things that I think I missed on, the things that I was proud of that, that went better than expected. Um, yeah, I went, I went through kind of a lot of that during the beginning. Um, because uh, I just wanted to lead off with that because it was really, really exciting, albeit difficult experience. Um, but yeah, would have liked to have done better in terms of like running out of time and not getting the materials I wanted down. However, um, was proud of where I ended up ultimately, and uh, yeah, it was one of the hardest things. I've never really done anything like that before, and. Um, Symmetry mode, I don't need symmetry mode on this. But yeah, so it would be something I, I can improve on and, and try again in the future because I think that um, definitely a lot to that. And I'm, you know, it's such a different way for me to work. I'm not used to working, and like, it's such a rapid, 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 you know, make sure you're always making progress, no time for like, you know, noodling, which is I, if anybody's watched this stream, I spend a good deal of time just kind of noodling and figuring things out and trying to get an idea of, of what looks good, what doesn't. I do a lot of experimentation and um, it's because I can kind of spare the time to you know, get an idea of what I'm feeling. And symmetry. Why not making a Pixelogic Telegram group? I'm not sure what that means. Appreciate it, Wyatt. Yeah, it was very difficult. And then, like, I, one of the things I did mention was that I, uh, I was, um, the person seated next to me, we're all kind of in this, we're in the Nomen School, and so it's like a, it's a kind of like, a, like a, this, like, arena, um, not arena, but, like, just, like, rows and rows of, of workstations and the person sitting next to me was the winner of the organic and so like I spent all my time working and I look over my shoulder and I see this wonderful piece and I'm just like it was such a oh man talk about crestfallen I was just like oh god but I, t I talked to he's, he's a great dude I, we spoke for a while before and after and uh, really really nice guy and um, yeah he, he was pretty encouraging because he said he, he'd, he'd practiced a lot and he got it he like 
got to the point where he could do his entire sculpt in two hours. And um, that was pretty awesome because they... Like, uh, Um, you know, that, to be that well rehearsed really shows, um, really comes through in the final result. Definitely want to try it again though, I definitely want to, like, I feel like I could have done better and I definitely want to, um, see how good I could do one day. A little bit more prep, a little bit more concrete of a concept. I kind of just went in there with an idea in my head of what I'd like to do. Did a lot of adjustments and hot routing the day of. One thing is just you know I, I follow all these artists that we were competing with and including the judges like the judges like Raphael Gassetti and like and it's just the thing that was really humbling about it was that I've been following all these artists for a really long time and like back when my very very first started beginning before I knew what Pinterest was before I kept a one note binder of reference before I like started having kind of more sophisticated methods for for collecting imagery and reference I would just like spend my, not my lunch hour, but like I would occasionally, if I'm waiting for a compile at work or as I had some downtime at the office, I would just like peruse Raphael Grissetti and these guys and I would like save hard copies of their images to like a zip disk for me to just like collect references of like way back in the beginning. So like to, to be, you know, trying to put a model together for them, you know, some years later is, it was really intimidating. Oh, Skullman, you're at the summit? Cool. What uh, what was your favorite um, talk? I really like the Guerrilla Games talk. That's the one that I kind of went through. I had Joseph Drust's talk and the Guerrilla Games one, there was just a lot of really good method that I was able to digest. Yeah, and the, the one thing, too, is that, like, uh, just, like, I, I should have done more prep with, like, submitting models and brushes and busts I didn't do any of that <laughs> I just ran out of time uh, with with my actual work and I didn't get a chance to do any of the things I wanted to do prep I kept I kept like procrastinating on my prep and then like it was the night before and I was so mad at myself I was just like well I guess we're just gonna <laughs> see what happens <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm considering all the all things considered I'm pretty proud of it um, given that fact that yeah, I wish I would have been a little bit more strict with myself um, however yeah. what can you do Yeah, we talked about this on my, on my last stream, Ludinez, but like, I'm just a big fan of just what's happening right now in Brazil. There's so many amazing artists out there. Um, I think I mentioned too that we've, we've worked with a couple character artists out of there for our game. Um, it's produced really, really high quality work. So I 
I believe this will work. I'm, I'm, every time I use a ray mesh, I forget what the heck I'm doing. So bear with me a sec. I'm going to try and stretch this array along. seem to do it. holders for when I get this in the engine. Yeah, and it's funny too because Skullman, I watch I watch most of what Joseph puts out. I'd watch all the as the brushes. I watch, you know, like obviously you can get buried in tape, and all of a sudden you're watching more than you're working. It's important to be doing both. But like I've been following Joe, and like he's just such a he's a really really good instructor because he gets like you know a lot of workflow things I would otherwise um, not be privy to. You know, he's really good at just. Uh, you know, I think these would probably be taller now that I'm looking at this. Um. So like yeah, I love I love watching his his stuff. Um, and what I found amazing was that like damn like after, even after all that though, like I still there were so many things I, I that he did in that specific talk that were new to me. I was just very surprised by that. I was like, geez, how's that even possible? Circles to be closer together. And, uh, yeah. uh, first time I watched my stream, what am I doing? How do I use that? Um, so yeah, like basically, um, this is mostly just an environment block out for video games, right? So like, here's like the map. Yeah, like here's like the you know the, the geo that's going to be going into the game. Um, 
this is a, a reference mesh to a scoreboard that loads another file. Um, they're all kind of being just blocked out in between Maya and ZBrush. And that wall in the back there is, is uh, like a clubhouse almost, like if you imagine like a beach club. Right, so like that's kind of, that's going to be like a clubhouse basically. And then I have some concepts here. So there's like the thumbnail, what I envision the concept kind of look like. A little patio to the left here. There's the court, some like a flag display and some shrubberies. Um, ocean to the west side, and then just like some beach lawn chairs and scattered, you know, beach equipment and stuff. And then you know, little cabanas and things right here. And the uh, you know Santa Monica Mountains right behind it. And I'm from Los Angeles, so that's kind of where I got inspiration from. Um, this isn't meant to be an exact replication, but you know, yeah, just like essentially that sort of thing. And then, and then all of this block out goes into the game, where we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do the final art and start building up more the uh, final look there. Excuse me. Also meant to be like a little deck. here Eventually I'll need to kind of jump out and uh, start putting together a more cohesive model, but for now I just kind of want to black out, see what I see.
these out here pretty soon. Starting to get a little tricky to do. A little playing around. Halfway here. One sec, guys. I'm gonna throw this over there. I gotta go Z this. I'll be right back. Give me a sec. How to connect two bricks of one Z model there. Um, which part do you want to connect? OSG. Um, 
like it looks as though this middle section here is not um, connected to, so like this middle section here is not connected with this inside section so if you want to connect them the thing I would do would be to just delete that delete both of those sections and then do an insert edge loop right there like let me just bring it up for you Polycube. Polycube is nothing in it. Oops. Right, so got this. So what you have now, it looks like, is this. Looks like they're not attached, and so you want to join them, right? Am I understanding this correctly? So you have that. So you have that situation, and the main thing I'm noticing is that. Um, and that's no problem. I mean, my work is not a big deal. I mean, I just sketching out some low res geo and, and placing some blockouts. So, you know, I I this stream is for helping out and hopefully getting people, um, you know, to the point where, you know, we can be helpful and get them more fluid with the application. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so the main problem is that like if and correct me if I'm wrong, like you've got separate meshes here and you want them to kind of all be joined. So like the thing I would do is like keep in mind that you can't do anything with QMesh on this until you have an edge loop, right? So you can make an edge loop and you can kind of eyeball it and then boom, there you go. Um, but I think the thing to do is is to just delete these all together and then throw your edge loop where you want it. Delete that, delete that. And now holding control while you have a masked object can drag out more and now you know that these all have exactly the same distance and they'll just automatically key mesh and you have one single thing right so if you have a really really long stretch of them you might try and make a brush out of it and to make a brush out of it you would just take the connecting pieces the beginning and end pieces and uh, do it that way um, and to do that you would do something like this Unify that. You know, you call this you know, those open holes there will be important. Open holes there and there. So now what you could do now is make this into I guess you probably want it to go maybe this way. It would depend. So you want to go that way. I would make that create insert mesh insert oops. New. brush curve. 
Tripart mode, triparts. I don't think it's gonna work. No. Um, to make it a triparts curve brush, um, you would groups split this. These connected? They are connected. Split hidden. <coughs> Split hidden. So now you have left piece, middle piece, right piece. They're all aligned perfectly because we sculpted them all together. Now you can make brush insert multi mesh and then say brush curve mode, try parts, weld points, and now it'll, oh, whoops, I think you need to go this way with it, the, how you're facing the screen uh, matters. it's creating is not correct. Sounds like you got it. Now I'm just kind of curious about <laughs> why this isn't working. Oh, is it about how they're aligned? You have to watch tutorial on, on this. I'm, I'm not sure why this isn't working. I don't feel like debugging it because I think you got the point here. But, um. See, White Fox, I thought that too, actually. Um. Why not get to the bottom of this? I, th I thought it was all polygroups. But then my, uh. Option select. No, oh, no, there it is. I wanted to do this before. I must have. Maybe I had it masked, but I couldn't do insert multi mesh. That was what it was. Now I'll do these other ones. Yeah, these are things I don't do on a regular basis. Most of my brushes that I use are saved, so I always have to like go through the growing pains of... Yeah, see, what the hell? Insert multi-mesh only works.
when you have more sub, sub tools. Maybe that's the thing is what it is. New brush. I think you can, I think it just. Curve mode, try parts, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, um, you, the, the trick is you don't need to have a multi mesh when you're doing a tri parts curve brush. Um, that's what I was forgetting. So, curve mode, tri parts, wall points, stretch them. And now you have your block just as so. Man, I used to be a lot faster at that, but it's been such a long time. Make it a little bigger. Yeah, so anyway, like what I would do to solve your problem long story short, is I would, you know, get to the point where I had them all lined up and then make it a curve brush and then use the curve brush to lay it out how I see, how, how you want it. Drop some curve smooth on there, go six to smooth the curve out, straighten it out, line up the bricks. Um, another thing that's pretty helpful, especially if you're trying to do hard surface and be ultra precise, is to. Okay, these aren't joints. Say so you want to do one right around that center curve, right? Say so that's like where you want to do. Um, I would crease this edge loop. And then, frame mesh by creased edges. Now you've got a curve there. Grab my insert mesh, drop it on that curve, and it's perfectly aligned to the curve I just set. Um, that way you don't got to worry about moving the curve around and having those little subtle differences. Um, so yeah. Nice little refresher there. I hadn't done that in a while. So let me delete this sub-tool. That sub-tool. This is actually kind of interesting, I hadn't really shown any of this yet. This is going to be an alpha I'm making for their live boolean on. Oh, I'm still done with the nano mesh. So this basically will cut holes into that and make um, like a like a sort of rubber mat that's going to lay on top of the sand, which is, you know, I want to break up the sand material a little bit so it's not just a giant sand pit. Like, it'll look like it's a sort of almost AVP pro volleyball sort of, like, infrastructure around it. over and split out the parts I'm going to start working on. I also need to redo the net and the center plate, so maybe I'll get into that in a second here. The main thing here I want to do is I want to separate these building pieces from each other. Extract 
those faces. Step in water tight. Let's do a quick vertex merge. Sure things. Yeah, I can send that over. And there's your dining room. Water tight.
especially those red wax. Favorite, favorite material in the ZBrush arsenal. came up a few times during the summit. I don't, <laughs> it's such a funny thing how much people. Uh, it is serious for people. Hammer, <laughs> center plate we work. Okay. Use this. Do a merge visible. Redwax is the papyrus of ZBrush. <laughs> People were triggered. <laughs> oh man, it's funny the passion people have for it. If anybody hasn't seen this bit, we could just watch it together, but I think we'll probably get in trouble. So I'll just share it. Um, that bit from SNL about the papyrus this for this being the uh, font. Her avatar is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time on that show. And now we're talking. Is that really one factor of ten to the... It is! Who knew? Okay, so that's interesting. I don't know why that's the case, but I want to talk about that because I think I just found out something. Okay, so I work in one-tenth scale from the game resolution. And what that means is a good place in ZBrush in the ZBrush units is to work um, in a fraction of the actual game scale. And that way I can just multiply it by 10 and everything just plugs in and works fine. Um, one thing I just noticed though is since that's at the X10 scale I just did all the way down to 0.1, which is as low as it goes, which is one tenth. You'll notice that because I did everything at X10, this is supposed to line up with that little plate right there. It's exactly the right size. So without getting too cute, I just dragged on the manipulator for his, you know, his. Um, it's a full thing which takes down to a tenth and one tenth is exactly the scale that I was working at. So that's quite helpful. I'm going to remember that because I didn't really know that that worked that way since the new manipulator, the new gizmo came out. Slicker and they fit the design a little bit better. So that'll be the new plate right there in the middle, which kind of just has it signals who wins, signals who has possession, and uh, points at the winner when someone scores a goal. Okay. Emergency. Sorry. 
Anyway, back to business. Okay. So one thing I also know, I know that I want to do um, a different little net in the middle. Let's see if this works out just as nicely in terms of scale. Gary, Google SNL Papyrus, and maybe in your country something like, maybe a link will come up based on your proximity, or based on your location. SNL Papyrus. And it's a pretty funny bit. Something I never noticed, and something that uh, definitely hit a home run there. All right, this is the multiplier. I need that piece. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. I haven't messed with the new damn standard brush. Um, I saw that he had his presentation and announced it, and I'm excited to check it out. But I just didn't get a chance to yet. There's just a few things I want to do here.
two sides. I want a mirror. There we go. Now we are talking. So this will be the new center of the net. <laughs> the guy is just, he's so mad, he's just like, he's like, like a child, he just hit the little drop down, picked a random font, and that became the logo for the most profitable movie of all time. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's such a good, I mean, how did they sit on that? Avatar came out a jillion years ago, how did they sit on that for so long? I wonder if they just found, like, they must have just realized that, that that was the case. It's amazing nobody called them out in the beginning. Unless there's a whole bunch of people, like, unless there's a whole, like, subculture of people who called out James Cameron in the very beginning for that. Either way, bravo, SNL. Alright, I'm gonna close this up in Maya just because it's gonna go a lot nicer. Ryan Gosling's a really good comedic actor. That dude's funny. Um, nice guys he's in, which I thought was really good. This guy's just so good too. He's just like the kind of silly booze hound guy he plays is uh, a great role for him. Lars and the Real Girl. Never heard of that. I'll have to check that out. Alright, stitch that up in Maya. Now we are talking. That side is not stitched. Now it is. This is all watertight, and we have a nice little centerpiece for our net. Now let's return to. This is just a pylon? No, it's the whole core. Now you return to here. Let's append our net centerpiece. See you later. You working late tonight? Um, that's a lot of custom shelves in Maya. Are those scripts you use? Yeah, Thrawn. Um, so, this is my custom shelf here, and these are kind of the things to the left are mostly just Maya stuff. Things that come with Maya that I use a lot. You know, freezing transformations, resetting transformations, delete history, non deformer history, flip normals. Um, starting at about right here. Well, these are bonus tools, they're all Maya's as well. Select hierarchy. Starting at right here. And to the far right 
are mostly just custom scripts and things that I like. This is a big one. Um, UV border to hard edge. Uh, if you guys are doing game art, um, you're aware of the fact that you want. I don't have UVs on this damn. Um, let's see if I can find something that has UVs on it. So we got UVs for this character. And one of the things you want to keep in mind is that based on where your UV islands are, you're going to want to have um, a nice shell there. Because like your normal bake's not going to be able to capture all the detail. Like there's a problem here because that's a 90 degree edge or even more acute actually and um, the baker is not going to be able to find the surface space there um, so I use UV border to hard edge as a script that comes through and just takes all your UV borders and forces them to be hard edges and so it's like basically a one click process to get all of your edge smoothing correctly and then a lot of these are just things I've been kind of picking up along the way AM tools and K tools and these are just things that uh, little Gumroad five eight dollar packages that that are things that I do a lot um, and then these two are things that I uh, this is a tween machine this is a free plugin that everybody should use if you animate tween machine is boss for animation um, curve recreator so yeah it's just a bunch of uh, Jimmy jams that I, that I find myself needing a lot. Um, you know, one of the first things I was ever told was that uh, when you start getting in Maya, you want to start, you know, you want to work efficiently with a lot of custom tools. And I always kind of been putting that off, but over over the course of time and just making these these this game, my uh, custom tools library has just been growing and growing. As I'm like, oh, I really need this, and I'll go either write a script or I'll go find somebody who's written it already. And I find that I'm doing more and more of that as a result of uh, necessity. Spy. Well, am I, you know, Maya is my, only because it's the first thing I learned on, Maya is what I use. But I'm certainly not endorsing anything from Autodesk or, uh, so, like, in a position of solicitation for anything like that. Um, I actually wanted to learn Max just for, like, my own breadth of understanding, but never had the time. Next thing you need to do is basically want to make this a net that um, looks like a beach volleyball net or a tennis net. So I guess the thing to do would be to like split it up with like poles that hold it in position, metal poles, and then. Um, I guess just try and do like a cloth panel throughout. So let me try that for now. I load up my net.
proportions are correct. <laughs> Only guilty person explain. Well, maybe people are less suspicious overall than in the United States, but in the United States, you're constantly explaining yourself innocently. Any idea how to create a wire fence, hexagons, like chicken wire? Um, if you wanted to model it, that's the kind of thing I would tackle in texture as opposed to modeling it. Um, if you absolutely wanted to model it. If you wanted to model it, I think the way I would do it would be to be a pen of plain 3D here. Jump on over to it. There's my plane. There it is. Okay, so this is if you wanted to do it such that um, I would like make the basic I make like a tiling asset so I would like turn this I would like drag out where are my primitives here we go how did Maya stop working I'm not even in Maya Maya just crashed on me I'm like not even in the application There's a cylinder, and you want to do like hexagonal, so maybe, um, oh, I don't know. Like the hexagons are the holes themselves, maybe? Is that what you're saying? It's basically. Say this is a hexagonal pattern, right? I'm not gonna bother making it one, but you feel me. Um, I would like draw this out in 3D space, 
and then tile it connecting all the pieces so like that's gonna be there move that right to there you know mirror and weld X mirror and weld Y and so now it tiles and then you could cut that off Cut all these off. Cut that off. Cut that off. Cut that off. Right? So now that that all tiles, um, you could then take. Oops. Solo. You could then take. Oh, whoops, did I not delete those? Hidden. Sorry. Okay. So like now what you could do is you can make that into a nano brush, right? So save this into a nano brush and then so like watch, I'll I'll create this. Oops, what have I done? I'll take this brush, create nano mesh brush, right? And so I think that's how that works. Let me see here. Insert nano mesh M. Oops. I'll be aligned. Rush, create, insert, mesh, brush, new. That should be that. And then if I say, dot, 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 insert nano mesh, press M. Should be able to really select that. Yeah. Okay, so like, see what I've done? I've, um, I made that sub tool my nano brush and then insert nano mesh on there you know make it size 1 offset 0 rotation 0 now it's size 0.5 and all of those will line up so he wanted to that obviously wasn't like a mesh pattern but if, if you follow along with what I just did there, um, you know what I've just done to build this thing could obviously be done to, to join all those things together and make like a mesh pattern, right? So like, if you make that into a nano brush, then you just go through, mark all these, and insert nano mesh. edited of course but there you go and then like you get tiling patterns and that's all geometry well it's nano mesh right now but you can also make that into geometry then you have nano mesh detail all up and down the surfaces in which you're trying to do that on so I hope that makes sense um, it's the best I got for you back to the net. How to advertise yourself and how not. Uh, I can't help you there really. I'm not much. Yeah, so this is a similar thing. Like you take that pattern there and uh, you know, as opposed to making those spheres like I just made, you know, you can do a open up that's if you wanted to get the geo which of course might not be what you want so if you open a 
give you a circle. I'm just Initialize, vertical divide, horizontal divide, eight, six, and hexagon and octagon. Right? So there's your hexagon. And then you would just do exactly what I've just done, but do it with that shape. And you can even like, you know, offset them and tile them. You know, if you build the actual geometry into a square, then you would have geometry. You could then turn the geometry into a nano mesh, and then you can turn the nano mesh into a like per poly stitched together kind of thing. So yeah, with that shape. Um, and then of course you could also do it with your texture and just make it, you know, if you draw a big plane if you have unlimited geometry you don't care, you know, use that texture, apply it with a surface noise via the surface and then noise map. I think there's probably one in there actually. I got a noise plug. I think you're probably gonna find it has a hex tile in there, just because hex tile is like how you say sci-fi. How do you do sci-fi? Hex tile. This thing should be solid. Oh, whoops, it's almost 2.30. Which is just about all the time I have for today, unfortunately. Is my landscape in here anywhere? Shop here. Do I have my water over there? I do. Thanks, Wyatt. It's hard to work and talk, but definitely want to be helpful for you guys if I can. Plus, it's just you know when I'm experimenting, it's still kind of like a it's like still essentially in a 3D sketch phase. What that means is um, I have a bit of a ways to go in terms of. Uh, figuring out what the concept's going to be and how it's going to look and I got a lot of figuring out to do for like what I want the architecture to look like. I just There's a lot of things that are still question marks in my mind and so that slows me down um, considerably when it comes time to model. Um, you know like I, I, uh, I have an idea what I want the net to look like, I have an idea what I want the clip to look like but, the, but figuring out what those things are going to be and then mod like concretely is often a bit of a sketch process and, and you know, answering those questions is actually more time consuming than doing the actual modeling um, in a lot of cases. So um, what I'll probably do is I'll take this and then from, I can do a big paint over and I'll, I'll kind of paint down what I think, okay, where are these things going to go, where are these things going to be, and then um, you know, hopefully with a little bit more of a concrete idea, I think I think maybe it'll, it'll um, give me a better pace when it comes to actually modeling them. Um, I know I'm gonna need some stairs. I'm gonna need some, you know, bars and scattered beach equipment. And I think, uh, you know, just getting a really neat paper sketch down would help me a lot. Um, and thanks for hanging out today, guys. Um, 
hope that uh, you guys learned something today. And if uh, you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. Be sure to check out our other streamers. Ashley, as you guys, many, most of you guys know Ashley, um, A Cubed. There she is. Uh, she streams on Wednesdays. Awesome stream. Really makes really, really awesome stuff. And um, yeah, there's a whole list of really talented sculptors out here. So um, be sure to check out the Pixelogic channel for the schedule. And uh, I will catch you guys next week. Sorry for having to dip early. Uh, I've got a professional commitment, but usually I go to three. I gotta leave a little half hour early today. Good two and a half hours though. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, see you next week.